The Romance of the Ranchos. Santa Cruz Island, 1542. Discover of California buried on Lonely Island. Santa Catalina Island, 1805. Smugglers anchor in harbor of Avalon. San Nicolas Island, 1870. Find woman lost 20 years on Lonely Island. The Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles presents The Romance of the Ranchos, a weekly dramatization of the colorful history which is the heritage of our Southern California. Each week, our wandering vaquero, Frank Graham, returns to tell a true story of romance and adventure in the days of the dawn. It's businesslike to protect your interest in land with a policy of title insurance. It's just as businesslike to safeguard your family's financial future with sound investments. And there's no sounder investment today than United States defense bonds. Even if these bonds paid no interest, they would still be the wisest of investments. For the money realized is our nation. And without that victory, no other investment that you have made or can make will be safe. So buy defense bonds and stamps early and often and regularly. Don't put it off. Make a down payment on victory tomorrow. Now here to tell us the story is our wandering vaquero, Frank Graham. Buenas noches, senoras y senores. Our story tonight is concerned with one of the great forces which helped to bring Americans to California, the sea otter trade, and with the principal locations of that industry in the Channel Islands off the coast of Southern California. And since it is closest to us here, our story will have for its principal setting the lovely island paradise of Santa Catalina. It's a story rich in the romance of the ranchos. <laughs> Long before the white man braved the hardships of a land exploration north from Mexico, the hardy seamen of Spanish frigates put forth into uncharted waters and won the honor of exploring the coast which was to become our California. In the year 1542, north from Natividad came two tiny ships, their courageous crews unprotected from the waves even by a deck, their commander unsure of what dangers lay ahead but courageously pressing forward, northward, to claim land and glory for the King of Spain. His name, Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo. Capitan Cabrillo. See, si? I don't like the looks of these clouds. And the wind looks like a storm, a bad one. See, si? There's right. narrow channel here, between the islands and the mainland. It's no place to be caught in a storm. We could easily be driven onto the rocks. See, si. we shall put into that cove on the island. See, si, it'll do. We'd better get into it as soon as possible. No one knows how furiously the wind may blow in these waters. Very well, Turner in Helmsman. Uh, do you have an idea what part of the world we are in? See, according to my calculations, this must be one of the Maluka Islands, just this side of China. See, we should sight the coast of Cathay before many days. And yeah, perhaps, in that case, these natives that line the shores of the cove must be of the Chinese race of which we have heard so much. Huh? Line the shore? See, look, hundreds of them. Oh, me capitan, I don't like this. They may be savages. We may be killed, massacred. Oh, no, for the Chinese are a friendly race. Surely you've heard that. And if your calculations are correct... Oh, but uh, I could be wrong, perhaps. See, you are wrong. They are Indians, such as we know in Mexico. This is not China, amigo, but still Alta California. Well, then they are savages. We most surely will be massacred. I don't think so, for see, they hold up their hands in welcome. They come in their boats to meet us. Now, here at last we'll find a resting place from the fury of the waves here on this island paradise. 
which we shall claim for our great king of Spain. Into today's harbor of Avalon on Santa Catalina Island, sail Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo, intrepid commander of Spain, to be greeted by the tribe of friendly Indians who made it their homes. He named the island San Salvador in honor of his flagship. After resting at the same cove, which is the mecca of gay vacationers today, Cabrillo again set sail north. Soon he came to a group of three islands, and anchoring in the harbor of one, named it San Miguel. Today it is called Santa Cruz, the lovely isle off the coast of Santa Barbara. Here they stopped for rest among the seemingly friendly Indians. But one day, the stillness was shattered. Capitan Cabrillo, what was that? Shouts, they seem to come from the shore. Look, Capitan, it's our party of sailors. They're being attacked by the Indians. Look. Quick, men, over the side, into shore, hurry. If we're to save them, we must hurry. <laughs> Right, men. Here's the shore. Up and over the rocks. Hurry after them. Watch out, Capitan. Those rocks are slippery. After them, men. After them. Capitan Cabrillo, look out. Capitan Cabrillo. Capitan, amigo, are you hurt? I don't think so. That was a pretty nasty spill on those rocks here. Let me help you get up. See, give me your hand. Capitan, what is it? It's my leg. My leg is broken. In those days, long before the use of antiseptics, the shattered shin bone of Cabrillo was a serious thing. Nevertheless, in pain but undaunted, Cabrillo pointed the prow of his little vessel north once more. Up the coast to Monterey Bay, to great San Francisco Bay, and beyond, he sailed. Only severe storms caused him to turn back, to run for shelter down the coast. But there was another reason for the gloom that enveloped the two tiny ships. Elmsman, is not that island uh, San Miguel? Si, senor, it is. Then we shall put in there. Put in? You mean drop anchor in that place where... See, si. or it might be a fitting place uh, to leave him. Then he's... See, si. failing fast. It is the gangrene in his injured leg. It won't be long. Capitan Cabrillo is dying. <laughs> Amigo, our ship, we're not moving. No, we're anchored, safe in harbor. You stop for me. No, 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 for the storms. They blow us off our course. We'll wait here for more favorable wind. You stop here for me, for I'm going to die. Mi amigo, you must not say that. You'll be no, all right. No, mi amigo, I'm going to die. I know that too. And you shall bury me here. On these lonely islands, this new land we have found. Mi Capitan, you must not think so. Oh, it's all right, mi amigo. I'm not afraid. I could not ask for much more to be buried here in this great new country to be that we have found. Mi Capitan. See, it is well. I only regret that I cannot go on and claim more of this vast coast for his majesty. I ask but one thing, that you, my good navigator, will go on. When I'm no more, you must go on, sail north and farther north for me. I promise you, me, Capitan. Then all is well, and my work will be finished. On the lonely island of Santa Cruz, then called San Miguel, they laid the mortal remains of Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo the first white man to set foot on the shores of Upper California. There, today, his bones still lie, lost under mountains of shifting sand, unhonored for the important part he played in California's history. It was over half a century before another white man sailed north to visit the islands off the coast and anchor in the little harbor on the island Cabrillo called San Salvador. It was in the year 1602, and the explorer was Sebastian Vizcaíno, it was he who spoke the words. In honor of the martyred St. Catherine, on whose name day it is pleased the good Lord to grant us this safe harbor, I name this island Santa Catalina and claim it in the name of Philip, King of Spain. 
And now, after the visit of Vizcaino, a hundred years were to pass before the first Americans sailed into these waters. Years after the mainland of Southern California had borne fruit under the hands of Spanish settlers. These Americans were the hardy seamen from the Leela Bird, Captain William Shaler in command. And these fur traders immediately became involved in an international incident of some consequence. As they were anchored in the Bay of San Diego on board the Leela Bird in the dead of night. All right, men. Over the side. You mean, Captain Shaler, you're actually going to send in that boat of supplies? Of course. Californians on the shore waiting to trade them furs. But it's against the law. It's smuggling. Ah, smuggling. Spain is just trying to keep out other countries. Smother foreign trade. People pay no attention to the law. Even the commandant winks at our trade, if it's not too obvious. Uh, all the same, I don't like it. The commandant might be in a bad mood. Yeah, we'll worry about that later. Over you go. Get to the shore. Be as quiet as possible. <laughs> All right, man, this is a place. Ease her in. All right, make her fast. Start unloading this stuff. Californian should be here any minute. Easy there. Don't make any more noise. Didn't help. We don't want the guard down on us. No use taking any chances. Oh, here come the men we're seeing now. Hi there. Over here, over here. Gracias, senor. You're kind enough to give us your exact position. Now put up your hand. What, what do you mean? You're under arrest. the beach until morning. It's it's only a small guard. We can free them easily. So into the boats, men. We have a little fighting to do. Quiet. Work up the beach slowly. Got them surrounded. When I give the word, fire your guns in the air, and we'll scare them into surrendering. All right, after them. Up with your hands, senores. You're surrounded! Right, men, with your rescue party. Up with your hands, senores! That's right. Now, there'll be no trouble if you just let my men go back to their ship. But there will be trouble, senor. Plenty trouble. You cannot do this. You're defying the government of Spain. And what will the government of Spain do about it? You will see, senor, when you try to sail out past the guns of the fort. Captain Sailor, you're not going to try it. You bet I am. What else are we going to do? Stay here in the harbor and let them arrest us all? But the mouth of the harbor is nearer. We'll have to sail within a hundred yards of the guns. We've got guns, too. We've got them all lined up on the port side, ready for action. We'll get by, all right. Uh, I hope so. It's almost dawn now, so we might as well make a run for it. All right, men. Up all sail! <laughs> Almost opposite the fort, sir. Keep her on this tack. They're shooting, sir. But their aim isn't so good. That one was short. Shall we reply? Not yet. Sail right in. Hold your fire until we're directly opposite. Then give them a full broadside. Yes, sir. It's going to be mighty close, Captain. I'm not worried, sir. We'll get by. They haven't hit us yet, anyway. No, but we're almost even with the fort. Shall I get the order? No, not just yet, sir. Another moment. Yes. There. All right, sir. Fire! Fire! Uh, look at them running away from the guns. Now we have a clear passage out, and we're safe. Captain Shaler's smuggling activity was characteristic of the times. Spain, in an effort to keep foreigners out of California, forbade trade. But the Californians wanted it, as did the ships of all nations. So, half-legitimate smuggling and evasion of customs went on for many years. But trade was only a side issue. The magnet which drew the ships of the world to California coast was the little animal which abounded among the Channel Islands, the sea otter. Together with the seals, these animals made millions for the early sailors. That was why Captain Shaler was impressed with Catalina Island when he stopped there to repair his ship. Look, sir, look. The water's alive with them. Yes, I've certainly never seen so many seals at one time. That rock out in the harbor is covered with them. But not only seals, sir. There are hundreds of sea otters, too. You know what the skin of a sea otter brings in the markets of Canton? No, sir. How much? Forty dollars, sir. And on up. And here they are to be had by the hundreds. My friend, these islands will bring us a fortune. <laughs>
The sea otter trade flourished for many years around Catalina Island. The traders from Russia, England, the United States, and many other nations reaped fortunes. They hired the Indians to hunt the otters all year. They paid them with glass beads, knives, or rusty chisels for a hundred furs valued at thousands of dollars. Finally, the supply was so depleted that the profits dwindled, and once more the Channel Islands were left in their solitary beauty. But civilization had come to Southern California, and in July of 1846, a small party of people, including Captain Thomas Robbins of Santa Barbara, landed on the shores of Catalina. Robbins was beside himself with joy. Man alive, just look at it. Isn't it the most wonderful place in the world? I can hardly believe it. But here it is. Here's the governor's grant right here in my hand. Santa Catalina Island is mine. It belongs to me. Several times on these programs, we've referred to the fact that issuing title insurance policies requires highly skilled, thoroughly trained personnel. Here's an example of why this is true. Let us say that the title examiner is examining the documents comprising the recorded history of the ownership of a particular piece of land. One link in that chain of title is a deed which Smith, the record owner in 1938, executed to Brown. The form, signature, and acknowledgment fulfill all legal requirements. From an inspection of the records, the deed appears to be valid. But the examiner knows that the deed may be absolutely void if any one of certain conditions existed in connection with its execution or delivery. If, for example, the deed was stolen by Brown or any other person and recorded without proper delivery, or if the deed was executed in blank and Brown's name inserted without Smith's written authority, or if Smith was under the age of 18, even though he appeared older, or if Smith was actually insane, though not so adjudged, or if the person who signed the deed was not the Smith who owned the title, in other words, if the deed had been forged, any of these conditions would render the deed void. None would necessarily be evident from an inspection of the record of the deed. It takes a considerable degree of skill and training to determine such matters. And when the Title Insurance and Trust Company issues a policy of title insurance to you, that policy insures you against loss arising from the existence of any of the defects I have mentioned. Thus, it is apparent that the title insurance policy insures much more than just a record title. For the first time, an individual owner took over Santa Catalina Island, the American captain, Thomas Robbins and now began its use as a rancho, and later as a pleasure resort. Few people lived there. The Indians who had made it their home had long since been removed to the mainland. This forced migration of the island Indians from one of the other Channel Islands furnished a fascinating and little-known chapter in their history. The barren, rocky spit of San Nicolas. It is the most remote of the islands off Santa Barbara, and because of its location far out in the open sea, its Indian inhabitants were among the last to be removed from the islands by the Padres of the Franciscan Missions. It was on this last trip that the story began. See there, Padre. You all aboard? See, si, see, si, Capitan. Just a moment. Well, hurry up. The wind's coming up. I want to get away from these rocks. The island is treacherous. Last one is coming on board now. There, he's up. All right, Capitan. You can weigh anchor now. Eh, none too soon. Looks like a bad blow's coming up, all right. All right, men. Up sail. Up sail. Weigh anchor. Up-sail. I'll be glad to get out of this, into the channel, even with this heavy sea. <laughs> seems to be some commotion. Huh? Oh. The Indians seem to be cutting up a bit. Probably don't want to leave their island. Well, I don't know why. No. no, it seems to be just one woman. She's screaming about something. Yeah, doesn't want to leave, no doubt. Women especially are funny that way. Now you take Roberto. Them. Roberto, what is it? What's the trouble? Oh, wait a minute, Padre. Uh, don't bother, Padre. She'll calm down a minute. It'll be all right. There seems to be something wrong with her. Perhaps we'd better wait. Padre. Capitan, stop the ship. We'll have to put back. Put back? Listen, See? mister, we'll not put back. I'm getting as far away from these rocks as I can, as quick as I can. No, Padre, you've got to stop this ship. That What's woman, wrong, my son? That woman has left her baby on the island. What? See, in the rush of loading, she left her baby. Capitan, you must turn back. Padre, it may mean the lives of every person on board. Wind's getting stronger every minute. The sea's running, and those rocks. Capitan, in the name of heaven, turn back. But Padre, it's too late now. Look, the woman, she's broken the way. 
She's climbing on the rail. She's going to jump into no. the sea. No, stop her, stop her. Stop, stop. Too late. There she goes. Madre de Dios. And her little baby. May the Lord have mercy on her soul. <laughs> Now that we brought him back here to Santa Barbara, Padre, what will you do with these Indians? He will be given homes on the mission lands, the children put into schools. He'll have a chance to be civilized for the first time. Then uh, you're through with my services? Oh, no, Capitan. We're going back to the island, to San Nicolas. But why? Uh, you mean the woman? See, si, the woman and her baby. But I tell you, it's just... It isn't possible that she could be alive. Miracles do happen, my son. It is just possible. And it's just possible that her baby may have survived, too. At any rate, we must try. Uh, all right. I'll be ready to sail in the morning. Hola, Capitan. Here are the supplies the Padre sends for your journey to the island tomorrow. Si, sí, si, sí, gracias. Say, what's all the commotion in town? Heard a lot of yelling and excitement. Oh, haven't you heard? It's gold. They discovered gold up north on the Sacramento River. Gold? See, si, bushels are what they say. Just lying around loose. Therefore, anybody who gets it first. Great Jesus, ghost, gold. See? Si. Men, attention, you lazy salt ears. Be a post. Get ready to hoist sail. We're sailing right away. I got the Padre. Blast the Padre, man. There's gold to be had. And we're sailing north tonight. When the ships of the port turned north in a mad rush for gold, the search for the lost woman of San Nicolas was abandoned. For many years, her existence was forgotten. Only the half-remembered story remained to be told and retold. Then, one day, almost 20 years later... Padre, on the last talk in, we stopped for an hour at the little island of San Nicolas. San Nicolas. Si, you remember, don't you? See, si, I remember. May God rest her soul. No, Padre. I think she is still alive. Alive? But Roberto... I know it sounds fantastic. But out there on that lonely, desolate island, we found unmistakable signs of human habitation. Primitive Indian habitation. Nothing would expect to be left by a passing fisherman. You're sure of this, Roberto? Absolutely. Then we'll start immediately. Organize a searching party to go out to San Nicolas. <laughs> Padre, it's no use. We'll never be able to find her on this desolate mountain. Roberto, she's here. Each time we've tried and failed, I have become more convinced than ever that she's here. We found the evidence. See, but where is she? We've combed almost every foot of the island. We've yelled out our lungs. Surely she would see us or hear us? I think she does. I think she's hiding from us. Hiding from us? But why? Because she has been alone here for 20 years now. No doubt her mind is affected. She's probably returned to a primitive mental state. I think perhaps... Wait. What was that? Sounds like a dog howling. See? Si. It... it seems to come from behind that rock. Come, si. come, Padre. Great heavens, Padre. Look. See, si, it is she. But she looks more like an animal. Poor creature just sitting there next to her wild dog staring at us. Look, Padre, look. She smiles. See, si, she has some human memory left even after tortures of 20 years. Come, we must take to the boat and bring her at last back to life. <laughs> Found at last was the lost woman of San Nicolas, whose love for her long dead baby caused her 20 years of animal like living on the lonely Isle of San Nicolas. So was closed an amazing chapter in California history. Now began the growth of the modern islands, either as ranchos or as pleasure resorts. Santa Catalina passed through both stages and through a number of ownerships. Captain Robin sold his island rancho to Jose Maria Covarubias of Santa Barbara who passed it on to Albert Packard in 1853. The next owner was James Lick, 
a wealthy gentleman with great philanthropic interests. In fact, some people thought he was a bit too philanthropic. James, I never hear of such a thing. You know what people are saying about you behind your back. No, what are they saying, my friend? It's your plum loony, that's what. Lord's sake, with all that money, are you busy every minute of the day thinking up ways of giving it away? Well, I can't use it all myself, George. Why not put it where it'll do the most good? Yeah, all right. I'm your friend. I understand that you got a big heart. Most folks can understand some of the things you've done, like the old lady's home... Orphan Asylum, <laughs> Library Association. But folks begin to talk when you started that Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. Oh, but George. I know, I know. Folks ought to be kind to animals. It's all right with me if you want them to. But now this last thing, that's too much for me even. You mean my observatory for the study of the stars? You mean them telescopes for stargazing? throwing money down a rat hole. But, George, astronomy's a great science. Ah, what can you learn from looking at them stars? James Lick, the whole world's going to laugh at you for putting money in them telescopes. But the world didn't laugh at James Lick. Instead, his name is perpetuated in the great Lick Observatory, where many great discoveries have been made. Now Santa Catalina passed into the hands of George R. Chateau, who founded the town of Avalon and built a hotel. In 1892, the land went to William Banning, son of the famous Phineas Banning, and he, together with his brothers and sisters, organized the Santa Catalina Island Company and started to develop the island into one of the world's greatest meccas for vacationers. In 1919, William Wrigley Jr. bought it and completed the work. Today... The Emerald Isle that offered safe harbor to the hardy seamen of Juan Cabrillo, Vizcaino, and Captain Shaler is an island paradise for pleasure seekers, known the world over. Such is the story of progress, and such is the romance of the ranchos. In a moment, Frank Graham will be back to tell you about his story for next week. When I first read the script of the story we have just finished telling, I couldn't help thinking how much more interesting my next visit to Catalina Island is going to be than my last one. For when I enter Avalon Harbor, I'll see a new and different sight. The island as it looked to Cabrillo and Vizcaino, arriving in their primitive little sailing ships. I'll picture in my mind's eye the shore as it looked in those days before the modern buildings and roads and piers were built, and see on the beach the native Indians that Cabrillo's navigator thought were Chinese. There'll be a brand new thrill to this always thrilling trip. The fact is that all of us connected with these broadcasts have found new interest in scores of Southern California places and communities through learning about their colorful histories. And the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles will feel well repaid if you listeners discover a similar added pleasure in Southern California through hearing these stories. Now, Frank, what's the story for next week? Next week, we're going to tell you the romantic true story of Hugo Reed, the Scotchman who came here to win the great rancho Santa Anita and the hand of a beautiful Indian girl. It's a story with laughter and tears, drama and high adventure, and you won't want to miss it. So until then, this is your wandering vaquero, Frank Graham, saying, Hasta la vista, señoras y señores. The Romance of the Ranchos, a presentation of the title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles, featuring Frank Graham as the wandering vaquero, is dramatized by John Dunkel and produced by Ted Bliss, with special music arranged by Irwin Yo. Bob Lamont speaking. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>